The tropical jungle of Borneo is the third largest island in the world. East Malaysia's state of Sarawak is located in the northern part of the island. Culinary specialist Kentetsu Ko arrives there in search of something different and distinctive. I'll be visiting people who coexist with nature. While retaining their traditional way of life, I'm excited to see what kind of food they cook. I imagine this is going to be a wild trip, really. He'll travel to a village of indigenous people and find out what they enjoy eating. Oh, oh look at that! Come along and discover the taste of Borneo. The state of Sarawak on the island of Borneo. Kentetsu heads to Surian. The town is well known for durian, sometimes called the king of fruits. This is the place for durian, and I'm here at the market, so I need to find some. Look at that! <laughs> it's amazing! It's a statue of durian! I see lots of fruit and vegetables. Wild vegetables and fruit from the jungle are sold here. Many can only be found in this region. But Kentetsu wants durian. This town is supposed to be filled with durian. I've been looking around, but I haven't found any yet. See? Where, oh where, are the durians? I came here because of durian, but uh, so far, no luck. The season is over. It's over? Oh my, I want to eat some durian. You can't. You can find tampoyak somewhere though. There! Tampoyak! This is tempoyak. Tempoyak. Is it, is it durian? Yes, it is. Smell it. It's totally durian. Tempoyak is salted and fermented durian. I'm a bit hesitant to taste this. It has a nice tartness. It's good, very good. Oh, you can taste the salt and fermentation. Delicious. Durian is so popular that the people preserve it in this way in order to enjoy it year round. Kentetsu reaches Lubok Antu near the Indonesian border. It's a good place to learn about food in Borneo. He visits a village of the Iban, a people who continue to practice a traditional way of life. 25 families live in this tenement house, about 100 people in all. Uh, Steele and his brother-in-law, Aron, welcome Kentetsu to town. Hello. Kentetsu steps inside. It's quite large. This is the rice we've made. All this is rice? The rice here is from last year. We've recently started harvesting this year's rice. Oh. There's a lot of land behind the building. Aron will show him something the village is proud of. Over there. A drink is being made at the top of this tree. We'll climb up a ladder to get some. It's a palm wine called Ijo. How is the wine made? The sap is tapped by slicing the bark. Adding bark from a different tree to the sap leads to alcohol. Whoa! Wine made of sap? Sap is collected in a jar to be fermented by cutting the bark of the palm tree when it bears fruit. So they're already tapping the sap over there. A jar is fixed on a five meter tall palm tree. It collects the wine. Oh yeah, good, wow. Ijo is a longtime favorite in these parts. It's a wine of celebration, always present during festivals. <laughs> okay.
How does it taste? Uh. Oh. Very refreshing and easy to drink. It's slightly sparkling and unfiltered. Quite refreshing. The light acidity is what makes it delicious. It doesn't seem too strong. Careful. Izo continues to ferment as you drink it. It takes you by surprise. Oh, it's a magical wine. Be careful not to drink too much. Something to eat would be good about now. What's over there? Miring and Paku. Miring and Paku. They approach the bushes by the side of the road. This is Miring. Miring. Miring is a type of fern. When cooked, it becomes thick and sticky. Farther in, they find something else. This is Paku. Ah, Paku. Paku is a type of bracken. It's edible without any need for boiling to remove bitterness. This is Miring. I know. Kentetsu is learning his way around. There's some Paku. Paku. I found some. This is nice. Oh. <laughs> For the people of Borneo, Miring and Paku are everyday items, gifts of nature. The group goes home to start cooking. Here are the Miring and Paku that we gathered earlier. We're only going to eat the tips where the buds are. What's inside this? Shrimp paste, fish, onion, ginger, and garlic. She tosses the mix into hot oil in a wok and stir fries until it gives off an aroma. Then the mitting and paku are added. Kintetsu takes a taste. Oh, delicious. The texture and slight bitterness of paku go great with the flavor of the stir fried mix. Very nice. Kentetsu is hooked on this mountain dish and its slightly bitter taste. Oh, this is truly delicious. The saltiness makes the bitterness tasty too. And the aroma of shrimp goes well with the wild plants. A nice drink would complement the food. The hint was taken. Full to the brim. I feel like I've come to paradise. <laughs> Jennifer, you like drinking? Of course. Delicious wine with great food? What more could one ask? Okay. 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 The next morning, Kentetsu lends a hand outside. Oh. Amazing. They arrive at a rice swamp in the jungle. Oh, oh, look, they're all harvesting rice. The rice is ready. This is what we use. It's a tool to reap the rice. Hold the ketam between your fingers like this while you pinch the rice with your index finger and your middle finger and cut it like so. Understood? Only take the ear off, right? Oh. That's the traditional method of the Eban people. Kintetsu gives it a try. <laughs> it's quite efficient. <laughs> yeah. Although the Eban people live in the jungle, rice is their staple. Once the rainy season passes, the villagers work together to harvest from February to June. 
While we're working with the rice, if a cute girl passes by, we sing love songs. Oh. <laughs> How romantic! Do people actually meet up by singing while working in the swamp? Of course. After work, we drink with the girls and have a nice time. So it's how guys and girls meet. I like that. It's an Iban thing. But right now, Kentetsu's hungry. Time for lunch. Bamboo. We'll cook rice with this. Ah, you use that. Once the bamboo is washed, Aron pours in more water. And in goes sticky rice that's been soaked. Next step, wrap with a leaf and seal the bamboo cylinder. Okay. That makes the rice ready for cooking. The men go gathering food for a side dish. Yellow melons will work. They grow wherever the seeds are scattered. We don't need to bring lunch here. A bamboo tube and vegetables like this will do. You've got all you need here. Roasting. Right over the fire. Oh, remember this? Tampoyak, salted durian. It's fermented, so it smells a bit like cheese. Banana leaves help with the cooking. A big scoop of tampoyak goes on one of them. Directly on the leaf. Sugar for some sweetness. And a small anchovy-like dried fish called ikan bilis. We wrap the food with this. I see. Oh. The banana leaf seals everything inside. Well tied. Impressive. Do I put it here? The food goes on top of the fire for baking. Ah. All the ingredients are straight from nature. 20 minutes later. Oh, is it ready? Yes, the rice is done. Aron cracks the bamboo tube to remove the rice. So that's how you do it. It looks delicious. Ah. The melon is roasted until the skin becomes totally black. The skin is then carefully peeled. The melon gets sliced. The tampoyak roasted in the banana leaf is ready too. Ah. This looks outstanding! Lunch in the jungle, with ingredients close at hand. The bamboo rice lives up to expectations. So does the tampoyak, for that matter. They really go well together. The taste is something like durian, but quite fermented, so it's rich and tart. The taste is complex, and each ingredient complements the other. The roasted melon is Aron's favorite. Delicious. Ooh. It's sweet and tart, kind of like a tomato. Very good. Maybe the intense sunlight and hot weather motivated people here to come up with dishes like this over the years. Our food is simple and completely natural. We don't need to do a whole lot to make it delicious. Kentetsu agrees with that. Lunch in the jungle is wild and wonderful.